Hi, this is Risa. Welcome to my Stitch Along series and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Having reached my 600 subscriber milestone, I'm uploading a free punch needle pattern along with this video. You may download the pattern in the description below to create a wall art for yourself or for a cushion. In terms of materials, I'm using Monk's Cloth Oxford punch needles and some acrylic yarn. Now first you'll need to print out the pattern and then align the red lines that are in the pattern and you can use a sharpie to trace out the pattern against a window onto the monk's cloth. Now I'm going to use a 14 by 14 inch punch needle frame from the Oxford company. In fact all of the materials I've bought here other than the yarn are from the Oxford company and I've provided the link below in the description. Now as you can see I've stretched the monk cloth over the gripper frame and you need to pull it taut so you have a nice taut surface to work with and I am now putting a flannel cover over the sharp edges to protect myself while I'm punching. Um, this also can be bought from the Oxford company. It also comes with these protectors or corner protectors uh, that I am going to insert before I start. For those of you new to punch needling, the side that you'll be working on is the side that has the pattern on it and it's considered the flat side or the back of the punch needle pattern and the loopy side is on the underside and I'll be using number 13, number 10 and number 9 Oxford needles. These are differentiated by the length of the Oxford needles. Um, so if you want more deeper loops then you can use the number 9 and I will switch to the 10 and the 13 for the flat work in the pattern. I'm going to start punching the white parts of the pattern here and here and I'm going to use a number nine fine Oxford needle to do that and I'm going to show you how to thread the punch needle. So you insert the yarn through the loop at the back or at the bottom of the needle and then reinsert the yarn here in the eye of the needle and pull through and keep pulling the front and the back until the yarn sort of slots into that hole, as you can see. And now you leave a little bit of a tail before you start punching. And what's important is that you will start punching in the direction of this line here that you see on the punch needle. To begin punching, it's best that you insert the needle perpendicular to the fabric you're working on and then lift the top of the needle very gently, very close to the fabric and punch again as you can see. So you can continue in this manner and this is the flat side and if you make a mistake you just remove it as you can see, super easy and then you kind of just run the needle across the fabric and that'll close the holes and you can begin punching again. So let's begin with the actual design. I'm going to start with the white yarn in the pattern. You can start with any of the other colors um, and as you punch you'll see these little stitch lines on the monk's cloth and when you have to turn you just sort of turn the needle and then punch right back down along the same line but make sure you punch in the center of the previous punching that you did. Now remember this is the flat work that we are punching from the wrong side of the pattern and what I want here is the loopy effect for the wall art that I will be hanging up. So this is the back and for all of the loopy parts you will be punching from the back and once I get on to punching the flat side I will turn over the monk's cloth on the gripper frame and punch on the right side of the pattern design. To end off, I like to snip off the ends before starting another part of the pattern just because it makes it neater to work on. Uh, as you can see, sometimes uh, you know the needle doesn't go through fully and so you need to push the needle in and sort of just adjust the yarn um, in the Oxford punch needle. And that might ha happen quite often, like here again, uh, you know, just pull out the Oxford needle and then punch it again and make sure you punch all the way to the full length of the punch needle so that you have a secure loop on the other side. 
And here again, turning around the punch needle and then always work in the direction of that slit or groove in the punch needle. Moving on to the yellow yarn, I am going to punch as I did for the white. As you can see, I leave a little tail when I start the punch work and that tail I'm going to snip off when I end that particular pattern or when I finish off with that color. So these are the basics for punch needling. You can continue with all of the colors um, as I'm doing here and I'm not going to provide a commentary for the whole video. Uh, and I'll only come in when there is a change in the design. So here you can see that I'm just snipping off the ends. I like to keep my work clean. Some people like to snip off the ends um, when they finish a substantial amount of the punch needling. And you can choose to snip off or keep the ends until you're ready to snip it off. Now I'm going to use the number 10 punch needle to punch three lines of orange in the pattern here. I've completed the loopy side of the punch work and turned over the monk's cloth here and I've already started on the flat work as you can see here and a little bit here and I actually changed the leaves from loopy to flat work as it wasn't looking so good so now it looks nicer I think and I'm going to complete the rest of the flat work for the pattern. This here is going to look very similar to the work that I've done on the right. Moving on to the black yarn, I'm just punching about four or five punches and then I skip to the next line as you can see. Don't worry about um, it showing because once you punch in the white strips, um, that little hop that you do is not going to be seen. So there you go, now I'm going to move to the white. Now in this case, however, I'm going to cut off every time I finish a line because I don't want to be hopping here and just to give it a neat look. So I'm, I'm not cutting off the ends as you can see here. Um, so this is what it would look like if you weren't cutting off all the ends at the beginning. So I'm just sort of punching in sections and then cutting off the white ends here.
finally to finish off I am using the black yarn to punch the background in a horizontal fashion. It can get a little fiddly here because you will need to move the longer loops aside in order to punch underneath them uh, like I'm doing here. So keep going in a uniform horizontal pattern for the whole background. And here's a final piece that I've stretched on a frame. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe, like and notification button. See you again next time. Bye bye.